Jolie. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Cup of coffee. The the first question is just what made you say I want to be the next mayor of Kansas City? You know, Stephen, it was really a kind of a process for me. I, I've spent the last 16 years as director of pro bono legal services for my law firm, representing folks all over the city, um, primarily kids and families in the foster care system and kids in the juvenile justice system. And that led me to run for state senate 13 years ago and spent eight years in Jefferson City really working on issues that impact the communities that I was representing as a lawyer. And when I was done with that, I wanted to come back to Kansas City and make sure that all of those policies we were working on the state level were being implemented here in Kansas City. And, and that's really what led to me running to, wanting to run for mayor because I just really feel right now that we've had a tremendous amount of progress in the city over the last 10 years and that progress isn't necessarily being felt by everybody so I want to make sure that we have a strong leader who keeps the city moving forward but also someone who makes sure that we translate that success into something that every single neighborhood feels and and I have the the experience and, and I've been getting things done for 13 years and I'm ready to do it another item that it will be on the ballot near your name is right. uh, the pre-k um, vote that Mayor James is pushing. Uh, we've asked every candidate this, will you vote for it? And if so or if not, what is your reasoning? I'm voting for it, and, and here's why. I, um, in my work in the juvenile justice system and my work representing families in the foster care system, I have learned that all our science shows that zero to five is, is really the entire ball game when it comes for kids, getting them kindergarten ready. Outcomes for kids that have quality pre-K, they um, are 40% more likely to graduate from school. They are more likely to not become homeless, less likely to enter the Department of Corrections. And so pre-K is absolutely mandatory. And I fought like heck in Jefferson City filing bill after bill to have universal pre-K and the state of Missouri is not gonna pay for it. So in the absence of a state or federal Option, I'm looking local and this this plan is not loved by everybody that is very clear this plan um, a lot of people have concerns about it but what I'll tell you what about this plan that convinced me because I wasn't involved in the in the planning process or the campaign or any of that what really sold me on this is number one it's 10 years in length so at the end of the 10 years if it's working great we'll scale it up if it's not working we can roll it back that's number one number two it is means tested, so the poorest kids in Kansas City are going to be able to have access to the program, and they're going to have the most benefit. And the money is going to allow them to go to public schools that are quality. It's going to allow them to go to private schools like Operation Breakthrough and St. Mark's that are privately operate, operated. This plan is going to put in the hands of parents the ability to get quality pre-K for their kids. They'll be ready to succeed. And, and at this point, without any other options on the table, I'm voting yes. Transitioning to crime, something that will impact young kids uh, that are, are growing up in our community. There's no silver bullet solution to fixing crime, but what do you think should be done or should continue to be done to lower crime numbers here in the city? I think it's a whole variety of things. I, I talked a little bit about being down in Jefferson City and working on, on things like criminal justice reform and getting smart on crime, I, I really want to make sure that those things are implemented on the local level. We've started to do that. We're moving in the right direction. But we also need to keep moving forward on, on some other programs that we have. We now have a public-private partnership that has put social workers in all of the patrol divisions. That's incredibly important because we are looking at not just the crime itself, but we're looking at preventing crime by going to the underlying issues that are resulting in crime in the first place. Uh, bringing back the community interaction officers for our neighborhoods was one of the most valuable things Chief Smith could have done. It's really helped create more trust and a relationship between the PD and the neighborhoods, and so I absolutely am in favor of supporting that. But moving forward, we have to get even more creative, and that's why I'm excited about some of the things that we're doing right now. We finally have a violent crimes coordinator at City Hall, which is important and needs to continue. We have funded the Health Department's Youth and Family Violence Prevention Plan. That's something that we need to continue to implement because we need to start addressing those issues. And then frankly, some of the other issues don't have anything to do with crime, but have to do with pre-K and affordable housing and transportation and all of the reasons that people um, find themselves committing crimes. We need to make sure that we're addressing those issues. And so I want to continue some of the good things we're doing. I also want to really, really vamp up the coordination that we have because right now we have the resources in the community, we have the people in the community, and they're not well coordinated. I think it's safe to say you're the only person on the ballot that uh, probably almost or at least 90% uses public transportation here in the city. Uh, talking about infrastructure, 
you know, a lot of people hit city council and, you know, tech to Twitter, especially this winter with potholes and things like that. What will be some priorities when it comes to roads and bridges and transportation? I know transportation is dear to your heart here in the city. What would you hope to, to, to do as mayor in Kansas City when it comes to those items? I think it's, it's really three things. Um, number one, public transportation is near and dear to my heart. I um, was able to get rid of my car. Uh, a few, uh, like about a year and a half ago because I live in a transit rich neighborhood. I live in a place where I am walking distance from the Truist Max and the Main Street Max and the streetcar and not everybody in Kansas City is in a, in a transit rich area like that. And so first of all, I want to make sure that we have a regional transit authority that is really funded in a regional way and that's going to be a tough conversation because we're going to have to have talks with people all over the metro area, not just KCMO, about how we can fund a rich and robust and multimodal transit system. My dream would be that every single person in Kansas City is a 15 minute wait from frequent transportation. We're not anywhere near that yet. We have an amazing partner with the KCATA. They are working hard to address some of those infrastructure issues. I'm excited about the Prospect Max rolling out. I'm excited about the street car being extended and then we'll be have that Main Street Max that we can move on to another line. Those are all great opportunities. We need to keep that moving forward. But other things that we have to address are more basic. Number one, we've got to make sure that when we get hit with winners like we've been hit with, that we have the resiliency to tackle the pothole issue. And the men and women at Public Works who have been working around the clock to address it, I mean, I cannot be more thankful for all that they've been doing. But moving forward, we need to make sure that we're putting resources so that we don't have the problems pop up. And so one of the things I'd like to do is continue coordinating not only our resources and, and our funding, and I'm excited that the budget this year substantially increases funding for the roads and the potholes in particular, but I want to use more of our smart city initiatives to make sure that we're identifying things sooner and that we're coordinating better with the public-private partnerships that we have. And then finally, I want to make sure that we have a multimodal city. So that means if you get around by walking, if you get around by biking, scooters, I want you to be able to have the safe and, and, and smooth ride and walk that everybody else has. And so one of the things I'm doing right now, we're actually walking across Kansas City. We started 163rd in Prospect. We're walking all the way up to 148th and Inner Urban Road. It's north of the airport. And every step of the way, we're, we're cataloging things. And I want to get tools into neighborhoods' hands so that neighborhood leaders can start doing the same thing. Probably lastly, the, the topic that a lot of people in the city, some, have been critical of, of is the conversation of when and when not to use incentives. Where do you stand on using incentives, using uh, you know money from the city to either help spur development in areas that are barren, or do you think the city is giving out too many incentives? So. There is no question that the incentives the city has given out so far have really been a catalyst to the revitalization that we've seen. We've seen obviously a, a thriving, exciting downtown. We've seen economic development projects like grocery stores going in in areas where we had food deserts. None of those things would have been possible without economic, de economic development incentives. But the thing that you have to realize is, is that they all have to be taken and, and evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. And so the ones that folks don't see are the ones we say no to. And um, moving forward, I would like to see the incentives continue when it makes sense. For instance, is there a public interest? If there's not a public interest, then there shouldn't be an incentive. But if there's a public interest relating to affordable housing, relating to transportation, relating to job creation, and making sure that we attract and retain workers in the city, workforce development, I'm all for using incentives for those. And, and I will look forward to working with the council and all of our different agencies to make sure that we continue to do that. 30 seconds or less. I know you're head of the airport committee. Finally, we're going to put a shovel in the ground. Um, but 30 seconds or less, why should people uh, check your name on April 2nd? You know, I have spent the last 13 years representing Kansas City, Missouri, and during that time, I've gotten a lot of things done, things that thought were in, people thought were impossible. And uh, they hand me a problem, and I solve it. And I tell you what, that includes the Kansas City International Airport. We're getting a shovel in the ground. We're starting to build that airport, and it's really going to help this city keep moving forward and address all of the other issues. And so I would ask for people to vote for me on April 2nd because I've spent the last 13 years getting things done for Kansas City, and I'm, I'm excited to work with the people of Kansas City to keep the city moving forward. Councilwoman, thanks for joining us and having a little cup of coffee. You didn't even take a sip yet. I'll let you take a sip. Thank you. <laughs>